this is not a good start to the afternoon. questions especially from buyers for the first time um, so I thought I'd do a, a quick show about the the most asked questions that, that I get Bella Bella hey little girl all right so I thought I would I thought I would do a a quick little show or just a little, quick little question and answer period about the most asked um, the most asked questions that I get so that way you know if you're buying a house or, or or haven't bought one in a long time then you have the the answers to these questions or at least have a general idea so all right let's get this thing kicked off here how quickly can you get me into a home I get this one a lot when somebody is most of the time in a hurry um, obviously if they're not in a hurry then they don't generally ask this question they might they might ask a question like how long do I need to have before I start looking um, but how quickly can you get get me into into the home it really depends on a lot of things it depends on um, if you're what type of financing you're having um, the way I would say it there is from the time you have a contract on a house uh, yes sir hey hey man what's going on did you say you picked up your tux already no, I have not. Say it there is that you need from the time that you get under contract on the house to the time that you close is going to be right around 30 days. It might be a little bit shorter, might be a little bit longer, but you can count on 30 days. In order to find a house, it really depends on what type of offer you're willing to give. If you're willing to give a an offer that is, you know, cash offer, 20% down, 30% down, 40% down, a substantial amount of money down, there's a chance that in this market we're going to find you a house quicker rather than sooner rather than later. General rule of thumb is you're going to want at least a month to look, and that's consistent looking, and then you're going to want a month to close. So you're going to need right around two months to answer the question. Uh, what is the first step in the buying process? Okay, hands down, most important question uh, I get all the time because there's a lot of times where they don't know what the first step is and so you have to get started somewhere. First step, hands down, is you, the buyer, need to talk to a lender. I will not show you houses unless you know what you are able to purchase. There's absolutely no point in going out and looking at homes because we might think that you are approved for a $500,000 house or a $300,000 house or $250,000 house if you're only approved for half that. So we want to know what you're approved for first, and then we'll start showing you some houses. Um, what is the minimum down payment for a loan? Okay, minimum down payment for a loan depends. Um, there's several different loan loan um, options and you will talk to your lender about each of those options depending on what you're eligible for okay but the most common types are conventional fha va um, those are the three most common types okay conventional is the most common type right now for specific reasons that we won't that we won't go into the minimum down payment there, generally, there are some different programs, but generally is 5% down. So if the house costs $100,000, you're going to need to put $5,000 down as your down payment. There are other closing costs and other prepaids that we can get into later on. But as far as down payment, 
you're looking at five thousand dollars for a hundred thousand dollar house or five percent for a conventional loan fha loan is three and a half percent as of today and then a va you can go all the way down to zero percent down but you have to be a part of the va or military that sort of thing all right i get this one a lot but maybe it wasn't it's not necessarily worded like this um but this question is, am I obligated to work with the lender, inspector, or other service providers you recommend? The answer is absolutely not. <clears throat> you are not required to work with anybody that I recommend. In fact, there's a lot of times where sometimes it can be better if you have your own people that you recommend. Now, the one thing that I will say is there's a lot to be said about having every single person on the same page. There are lenders that I recommend. There are inspectors that I recommend. There are title companies that I recommend specifically for the, for the reason that I have a relationship with them to where if there's any issue whatsoever, I have no problem picking up the phone and saying, hey, what's the deal? And then getting it fixed quicker than if it was somebody that I didn't know, I didn't have a relationship with, and maybe you don't have a relationship with that you were maybe referred to by a friend as well. So it's one of those things where, no, you're not obligated to use who I recommend whatsoever, but there are some real advantages to using people that everybody knows. That way, if strings need to be pulled, they can be taken care of. Uh, last question, and I'll end with this one, is what if I'm not happy with my realtor's service? Well, so here's the thing. People don't always mesh up, and sometimes they clash and to, where it, to where it doesn't work out, and, and that's understandable. That happens in business all the time. So sometimes you're not going to be happy with your realtor, and then other times your realtor is not going to be happy with your buyer. So sometimes it, it works to where you just part ways, and that's one of the options. At some point, if you're not happy, you just say, listen, I'm sorry, it's not working out. Now, there are cases, and not necessarily with me, but there are cases where the buyer's agent makes you sign a buyer's representation agreement. At that point, there is signatures and it is a legal doc document of sorts, even though it's kind of fragile uh, at best, but there, there will be a date on that. And at that point, you need to check to see what the date is how you can get out of it, talk to them most of the time, and I'm talking the majority of the time, 95 plus percent, if you go to the realtor and you say, listen, I'm not happy with the service that I'm getting, we need to part ways, 95% of the time, they're gonna happen. And certainly with me, that would happen. So sometimes it's just bet best to see you later for both you, me, everybody. So anyways, I wish I wouldn't have ended on a negative note, but these questions are, I'll get you one second. These questions are important and uh, I hope it helped you out. So, see ya.